I wish you are inspired three of achieving excellence in customer service. Let's get cracking. With communication in customer service, we need to develop excellent communication when we are dealing with our customers. When we talk about communication, the first thing that comes to mind is verbal communication and non-verbal communication. But in terms of dealing with our patients, we are going to add one distinct factor, and that is excellent listening skills as well. So apart from a verbal communication and non-verbal communication, it's important to listen and listen carefully. Because we are dealing with people who are trying to describe a certain situation to us so that we'll be able to help them and relieve them of their pain. So we need to listen and listen good. So we take note of the fact that the main objective for us to pursue excellent communication in customer service is to achieve a very productive relationship. We need to develop a very productive relationship with the customer. So that we'll be able to assist them and assist them very well because of the condition that they are coming in with. Now, if you take a good look at the picture up here, you realize that we have two ears. Asunya, two ears. When you put two ears together, it forms the shape of a heart. Akuma, as we have it there. And so the text says that two ears put side by side forms a heart. Now, interestingly, the word ear, E-A-R, sits in the middle of the word heart. So the two ears put together, it sits in the middle of the word heart. Listening is the way to the heart. So if you want someone's heart, listen to them. If you want to gain someone's heart, if you want to gain someone's attention, it's very good that you listen to them. So our formula, we would tell about cry fat. <laughs> so it's very good that we listen to our customers. By so doing, we gain their heart, we gain their trust. And they also feel at ease talking to us. At the end of the day, we all achieve satisfaction in the work that we do. Now, there are six C's of good verbal communication. Now, we are zooming into the verbal communication. And we are looking at six C's that we need to pay attention to. The first thing is that whatever we are communicating to our patients, whatever they are communicating to us, it has to be clear. The information has to be clear. It has to make sense. It has to be communicated in a way that everyone understands. So your patient gets the message and understands it because it is clear. There is no ambiguity. The second C is that the communication has to be courteous. Sebi sebi, your patient now are better than we need no. Ono su fi obus fi em. O yo bi de shi. Eni ti eni dia e se na e fata. Se di o expect e se en fa eni dia ma ono. En fa se eni dia na e bia e ma sa patient. The information has to be concrete. It needs to have grounds. Asemna o kana e wo nina so. Eninti asemna pe 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 pe. In our previous video, we talked about the fact that there is nothing wrong if you have little information and you ask for additional information from a senior colleague. It doesn't take anything away from you. So it's important say you be making sure say information now you're communicating. It is concrete. It has grounds to stand on. The information again has to be concise and that is the fourth c there is no point in loading a lot of information on that poor client because already we've established say, they have come in in a very confused state they have come in in a state that nipana is not even thinking clearly and until if we load a lot of information on that patient there is a likelihood say i'm not working on her for her so it's important that we make it concise. If the information we are giving has to be such that it's a lot, then it's good that we write it for the person. But as much as possible, 
let's keep the information concise and the information has to be correct correct is linked with concrete and that is the fifth c the information has to be correct don't give information that you are not sure about because we are dealing with health it is a life and death matter finally the the sixth c the final c is that the information has to be complete let's not give information that is halfway we start a sentence now we read, and you expect that the poor patient has to i mean be able to conjecture and then come up with what the statement is supposed to look like at the end let's make sure that the information we are giving is complete in terms of non-verbal communication we are supposed to take note of these attributes of non-verbal communication body language is the first thing and when we talk about body language we are looking at the gestures the type and then what we are supposed to do or how we are supposed to react the first thing is eye contact or eye contact the posture the facial expression and all other gestures so when you are talking to someone we we know that we are we expected to look into the person's eyes it's not like i say oh yeah what you be oh baby aha mama kasa meti and so when you say me the masuni eti into the kasa no there is supposed to be eye contact that is how the the, the patient will also get that social need fulfilled that she's also being treated like a human being our posture is very very important as we go forward in the video we'll, we'll talk about all these things posture and all that our facial expression very very important then our voice cues the pitch of how we communicate i mean sentence back on a statement back where you can say it in two different ways and it will mean two totally different things mommy it's different from mommy you are virtually saying the same thing but the pitch and everything differs and it brings out two different meanings that we are supposed to take note of the volume of how we communicate also need to be watched the speed of our speech asemna ye kan ye communicate we need a person to listen to us hear us and understand what we are saying and so speed and all that needs to be taken into account now when it comes to the flow of communication there is a diagram that is we are all familiar with when in, in terms of communication skills if you have ever attended a communication lecture if you been in any communication forum we know about this diagram communication flows from a sender someone is sending the message that person encodes the message then the message before it gets to the receiver has to be decoded and once it's decoded the receiver understands it a person gives a feedback so that is how the flow works one area in the flow that i mean over the years we've not taken a lot of account of is the one down there and that is what we refer to as noise the noise in communication so noise in communication is not about people making noise like this that is not what we are talking about but there are some factors that are considered noise when it comes to communication as you are communicating there are some blockades that we do not see they are intangible and so we may not give a lot of attention to it but they be, they become blockades they become barricades for the receiver to be able to decode the message very well it's important that as we talk to our patient we know the caliber of patients that we are dealing with and encode the message in the right way so there is this uh, example about when those days Idi Amin visited the Queen of Britain and then they were served lunch they ate their food here in his entourage and afterwards he was supposed to give an appreciation speech so Idi Amin mounted the podium and his words were we have been fed and we are fed up and when we go back to our country 
We shall retaliate. <laughs> Imagine how the Queen of Britain and her entourage will also take this message. I mean, all that Idi Amin was trying to say was that they have been fed and they are full. They are satisfied. So when he goes back to his native country with his entourage, they also make sure that they invite the queen and her team to also come and be fed. But the way he put it, we have been fed and we are fed up. And when we go back to our country, we shall retaliate. It's as if they are calling for war. <laughs> But it's about how we encode a message and how the recipient will also decode it. So we need to pay particular attention to it. And most especially the noise in communication. It's very important. So these are the communication noises. Again, like I said, we are not talking about the ordinary noise at the background that we, we hear that uh, most of the time when we are communicating is around us. But we are talking about certain things that we do not see. Like the first one being worry. Worry is one thing that can be considered as a noise in communication. Look, let's face the fact. Mamina Wati Wenimu, she's so frustrated because Nebana or Yarino. Probably an upon or the Nebani Fifia Abba Hospital, what you can cry in the Kinet Trasu, if you cry and send off you. There's so much going on in the house. On the Papa now, Kontoka. O free hospital honor before we go for you know or dream on say neba awadi it be a one year we jano ho papa no kra and say ni fi inti neba na say we jano wo fi no ho na ehwa kwa na man ana wo de panyi ni so aba hospital inti mama no to na why you worried inti asem na wo kan o he we ni more right but trust me and you gonna angry o sa asem na si wo fi no that is one aspect. Ibi Sukra, of course, a member the eta I can't say him with fire because a member you need the when it comes to a relationship. Papa ni bi or trim now, baby. The woman is now aware of it. Into a two win now, I worried. And no more dream with the two moon. And into a sem now, okay. The woman's so educating about health and a one of a pen. But I dream no go baby for four. Until we need to take our time. And this becomes a noise in communication, trust you me. The other thing is stress. And there's a lot of stress. Sometimes patients now open. Unisika and also could deep power by be crying and when you be big a cra and all your hospital. Sika na kitan and cra was not the abano cra ABI and so at the corner of a And into all that puts a lot of stress. Plus the fact is you can be you be some fa car cra just one nineteen walk of you. And you know, or two women are draining the baby before. We need to consider all these and put ourselves in the shoes of our patient. And it is stress becomes a communication noise. The third thing is inattentiveness. And into one in a casa and a pa say, Midi can kind or any new punet castle. Oh, sir, sadly, we would need papa, which mean you be not. Some misunderstanding, be no more kibia chum, while later up a cot now, what to one of his two teams, ah, me, we can't make cancer chain, murphy. No, in fact, it was a miss uncle back. I miss uncle Kirby come home. I mean, it's it's one thing about human being. And in the other pan, can only papa do chaps on a funeral, two hospital on our kai say, me, we can't make cancer, same way chain, or they remember how to, and in the mammy nest, papa doctor. Health worker, Tia says, Mamma, no, Tihono. She's going through a lot. Papa, now, Baba Hospital, only is going through a lot. So, oh, yeah, adolescent are going through a lot. They are thinking about so many things. And it is sometimes they are inattentive. Sometimes it's anger. BBS, you fear. They are coming to the school fees. But when you hear say, Papa, now send this karma. The girl be a walker who mumu receipt no phone. So, until Mamma, no, too, would drop. Galai <laughs> and into anger can sometimes also become a communication noise. Then there is hatred, of course, hatred need a some baby who had a baby because when she will be the other, but I mean, walking into the hospital, see you sitting in front of you, no cry, or when he for whatever reason, so 
hatred can also become a communication noise. And then there is mistrust, where the patient doesn't even trust what you are doing. Sometimes we as health workers, I need to say this, we, we give the room for the patient not to trust us. And that is because if you are in front of the patient, we as health workers, then we are arguing. Patient need to open Ah, now Sandra, so patient no buy na uma udi uchi we two meals no. And you two meals and there was all the man eh five meals na doctor no true. Oh there be any five meals. Many in a kasai will see two meals. Then right in front of the patient we are arguing. Patient ni bit it who they in the queue, they are listening to us. I won't go say confusion are setting in right in front of them and they are observing it. So in their minds they are like hey. So amongst the health workers no crown, you are not able to agree. What it means in say monamu, you don't even know what you are about. So they don't even trust us anymore. So we need to make sure that we act professionally. If they are there, what could be be our colleague here now feels a near writer. Nothing stops you from pulling the person aside. Then between the two of you you agree. Not in the presence of the patient, but backstage. You can't want him. Oh, see, but doctor, I'm not going No, see, because of A, B, C, D, you know, instead of two, you know, and five. Then we agree amongst ourselves. We carry on. There is no point arguing in front of the patients. It doesn't exude a lot of confidence in them. Now let's go into distorted communication. Sometimes because of this noise that we talked about, the worry, the anger, the inattentiveness, the mistrust, the communication can be distorted. If you ever, if you ever attended a communication forum, sometimes we do um, this elaboration where um, in the exhibit, the facilitator will whisper something into the first person's ear and then ask the person to also whisper into the ears of the next person and then it goes on till it reaches the last person you realize that by the time we go on and on till we get to the last person the communication totally changes and so let's take a quick look at what we have here there was a message from a director to the deputy director and this was the message that the director gave to the deputy director there will be an eclipse of the sun between 10 30 a.m and 11 a.m next week because it is an event that does not happen often i would like all workers to assemble in front of the garage to watch the sun disappear i the director will deliver a short speech for 10 minutes all workers will need to come with their safety glasses now deputy director was supposed to relay the information to the administrator look at how the information was communicated. The director will be making a short speech about the garage at 10.30 a.m. <laughs> First blow. This is because the eclipse of the sun will appear next week. So he wants 11 people to be around to see the sun disappear. Since this does not happen often, those coming should come with their safety glasses. An administrator with the information you can come to the see the director would deliver a speech to about 10 to 30 people concerning the disappearance of the eclipse at the garage next week. Since this does not happen often, those coming should come with 11 safety glasses. Now the last message from the PRO to all staff, <clears throat> and this is how it went. Next week at about 11.30 a.m., the director would deliver, would disappear, sorry, into the eclipse. As the sun comes at the garage this is something that does not happen often and therefore all workers must come and watch with safety glasses so the information has totally changed when you look at the last one that came from the pro to all staff it's a totally different message however when you look at all the messages from when it started from the director to when it go to all staff there are certain key things which appear in all the messages for instance the issue about eclipse of the sun, you always see it there. The time, 10.30 and then 11 a.m. But sometimes they are interchanged. So instead of 11 a.m., you see 11 people. Instead of 10.30, you see 10 to 30 people. 
But then, even though the spirit of the message is there, it has been changed. And the meaning changes totally. And that is how sometimes communication can be distorted. And it's important that, like we said, if the information is going to be loaded in such a way that it will not be concise, then it's better you write it down. Because once you say it, the next person communicating it to the other person, it becomes a totally different thing. It can change the whole meaning of it. In the same way when we are communicating to our patients, it's important that we make sure they get the message that we are giving and then execute it accordingly. Now, communication with special needs customers. Sometimes we interact with patients who have special needs. And we need to be able to know how to communicate effectively with them. We start with people who have hearing impairment. If people have hearing impairment, there's how to communicate with them. We use a lot of gestures. Of course, they cannot hear you. So it's good that if you know the, 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 the signs, how to use the signs, you use them. A lot of gestures. That way they'll be able to follow and then understand what you are saying. It's always good that we provide written information because they have a hearing problem. And so if you write, they will be able to read, then act accordingly. We use a lot of facial expressions. They cannot hear you. But of course, like we said, in nonverbal communication, we communicate a lot with our gestures, a lot of, of with our facial expression. The patient can look at your facial expression and then understand that you don't really need them there. The way I obey you will name number and say, as a woman here no hope. So it's good that we use the right facial expression. Then face the clients directly. Because they have a hearing problem, it's good that when you are interacting with them, you face them directly so that they can look at you one-on-one -on -one and then understand everything that you are saying. When it comes to people with problems of vision, then we, the first thing that we need to do is that when we are communicating with them, we do not need to shout. We do not need to shout. It's a visionary impairment. But it doesn't it doesn't help in any way. It's good that you don't shout. Then you speak directly to the person. Because they have a visual problem. When you are talking to them again, it has to be direct. And then as the person is entering your room, it would be it a consulting room, if you are the OPD, you need to start speaking. Because people who have visual problems usually use the sound. They trace the sound. So once you are speaking to them and they are coming, even though they cannot see you, they can use the sound and then walk directly to you. If it's about a mobility problem, patients who cannot move, then what we do is that we place materials within their reach. So probably they are in the wheelchair. If you want to hand something over to them, you place it in such a way that it is within their reach. They can easily move just a little and then have access to it. Then you sit so that you can make direct eye contact with them. We know that people who have such people of special needs, be it hearing, vision, and channel mobile health, because uh, they feel that in society, most of the time, they are taken for granted. And into only need to be you know, careful. We be to be over here now, we we'll take you offense. So it's good that we, when we are communicating with them, we pay particular attention. And we sit, we make eye contact with them so that they know that we are addressing them. And then do not push or lean on their wheelchair. If the person is sitting in a wheelchair, and you have to do a circle who see wheelchair, no, so now, I could burn it to say, you have to be a little selfie. No, it doesn't work that way. The person can be offended. So it's good that we respect them accordingly. Now, there are some types of customers and we also need to pay particular attention to them. If we know the type of customer that we are dealing with, we'll be able to deal with them and then deal with them very well, make them satisfied and they don't get offended. The first one is the patient customer. And we are saying that with the patient customer, no matter what you do to them, they do not get angry. They do not talk back. They will not get angry. Even though you are speaking to them in a harsh tone, 
be you dean or show and we call them the patient customer who before we but there are other types the second one is the critical customer so the critical customer is the one that acts like they know it all that's how they behave in your power hospital to be sure hey hospital pan how you see see and we will make sure say or more or more proper how hey now hospital now you want to tie the tie war and see we call American hospitals now. They act like they know it all. Sometimes when they are in the queue, they can talk to all the other clients who are there and then try and preempt what is about to happen. Hey, mommy, now Obana then they now there, but ah, oh, ask my own. Ah, okay, ask my the moon room, they room one. My doctor, they bring you know, and then you have but who will be room when she will be free from? Hey, mommy, now so bad. I don't know. You know, Obu Brim Brim. Hey, and I'm going to have a baby. My to have new. Now, Obu Obu, I'm going to. They act like they know it all. That's how they behave. Sometimes they can give the wrong information to the patient. So when we know them like that, we should be able to know how to deal with them as well. And then there is the third type of customers who are the angry or short-tempered customers so what we need to do is that we need to listen to them carefully and we do not need to return fire for fire because most of the time these people are people but in the frustrations if you will be never you may think that they have a personal beef with you but they are just projecting their anger from somewhere and then landing it on you and into one on our own, and we now we you will need to change one make it eye contact. Hey, my minutes, one I'm in no Casano. Hey, the motiha mu ye be ye. Mushi and amotia moji jinko folk. One only problem be a win shell be other, but they are projecting their anger from somewhere and then they are laying it all on you. If you are not careful and you also want to return fire for fire, it will not end well for anyone. Folks, we'd like to bring the part three to an end here. Remember to like this video, remember to comment, share your comments in the comment section, share the video, and most importantly, subscribe to this channel so that when we upload the next episode, you'll be able to watch it. Thanks a lot. We out.